Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem C that is flexible strings from code forces round 848 that was ready for dip 2. So this is definitely an easy problem, doesn't require any complicated DSA or a big big kind of observation per se. So let's get started with this equation. So the question states that you have a string A and a string B of length N. They are at most 10 different characters. Now this over here is actually marked in bold and this definitely is the most important observation or the only important observation in this question. Then they say that you also have a set Q. Initially the set Q is empty. You can apply the following operations on A any number of times. So in a certain, in a single operation, what we can do is that we can select an index for of that string A. Then the character that is pres present at the particular index will shift that character or we'll add that character to the set Q we are having and we'll replace that certain character at index I in A with a new character as we like. So it, it's going to be a character of our choice. We can put that back into A. So over here, they have actually discussed an example. You can, uh, If you want, you can uh, pause the video and you can go through this particular example in order to keep the video short. I'll not be going through that. So why we are doing all of these things is because we want to uh, maximize a certain value. So we'll read about that. But firstly, we need to make sure that after performing the operation any number of times, the number of characters in the set Q should not exceed K. So this is the constraint we need to follow. Also, the thing we are uh, trying to minimize over here is the substrings in A and B that are same. So this is uh, some, you know, we can say a fancy way of writing that stuff, but just to make it easy, we simply want to maximize the number of substrings in A and B that are actually same. Cool. So with that, uh, they have given the uh, constraints so over here in that is the length of the strings A and B can go up to 10 to power 5. However, the number of dif uh, different characters, distinct characters in uh, in the string A can be at most 10. So this is an important observation as I said. So let's start with the solution. Cool. So what they're saying is that this is the string A we are having. Give me a second, the pencil. Okay. Yeah. So this is the string A. This is the string B. So we can perform an operation. In operation, we select I. So this is the index. Then we'll select a X. That is the new character. Then we'll replace the uh, character at index I with index X. And the initial character that was stored in that particular location would now go to a set. It's a Q. At, at the end, the set Q cannot contain more than or you this you can say the size of the set cannot be greater than k so this cannot happen cool so that's it that's what they have given in the question and that's what we have to do now very easy observation is that since they are talking about 10 different characters and from this uh, like the string a is made up of 10 different characters and the number of different characters that we can choose to replace can be up to uh, up to k right so in total this uh, the kind of characters that we are going to choose is from a possibility of let's say this is the okay let's call it number of different characters different characters so this could be anything but its value is less than equal to 10 also k is less than equal to 10 that's obvious so the possibilities for all the strings or all the characters kind of characters so when i say possibilities i mean that it's possible that you want to remove uh, you want to do operations from this particular set right so you'll say that in my string wherever i am having a or b or c right let's say like this so wherever i'm having a or b or c i want to operate on them only so what would happen in this case is that let's say you are having b 10 times right or you're having b n number of times even then when when you'll be performing these operations on all of these indices it would only be counted once reason being that a set actually con uh, contains unique values so even if you are operating on the same character n number of times still the set set size won't increase right so also the number of possibilities would be the number of different characters that are present in a let's call it d so it would be d c k so d is the number of different characters k is the uh, upper limit of the number of characters you can have in the uh, in this set and C over here basically means choosing. Now technically D and K both are limited to 10. right? So this is a very small number. So that's it. What uh, That's the entire thing we are going to do. 
so firstly we'll find out what are the possible ways you can say so in what ways we can choose uh, k, uh, k characters from the string right after that what we'll do is that uh, we'll say that if a of i or the character at particular location is equal to b of i then well and good right if it's not equal then what we'll say is that in the current criteria or in the current set we are if you are if you are already having that particular character so let's say our character uh, character set is let's say x y z right so what we are willing to do is that we are willing to replace okay so the uh, character set is x y z so what we are saying is that if my ai is equal to bi then well and good if it's not equal to bi then if my ai is any of these three things then i'm willing to change it I, I can change it to anything so that doesn't matter or so over here I'll simply say that if this condition is satisfied or the current set so let's say set is denoted by st just a random name if my set contains or my set dot count whatever, like it would depend on the la language you're gonna use so it doesn't count you can say a of i in that case I can count that uh, count then same so I'll just increment a variable let's say same cool that's the entire thing we have to do at the end so one more thing a simple mathematics over here is that you from this you will be having that how many characters are same so let's say this is the string you are having so you say that the string i get okay so characters from this to this location are same then characters to the, uh, from this to this location are same this is the string a this is the string b so th basically that means is that let's say this was a b c then this was f g h also over here this is a b c this is x z this is z x or that day anything you can take f g h so over here you can say that these characters were same and these characters were same so how do you calculate the number of substrings that are actually same so the number of substrings can actually be the number of contiguous arrays you can say so that basically is n into n plus one or over here the count or you can say count into count plus one so over here the count is three so you can say three into three plus one divided by two also over here the count was three so three into three plus one divided by two so for each of these pockets you will add up uh, add up the values at the end so over here you will get a 3 into 4 by 2 and over here also you will get a 3 into 4 by 2 this would cancel out so you will be getting 12 as the answer cool i guess that's enough of an explanation doesn't even require that much of explanation but i already gave that so let's look at the code the code is fairly simple so initially the problem i was getting is that i was actually permitting all on a lot of possibilities i could have trimmed that further so doing that actually helps so i'll be uh, like making you go through only the optimized code so let's look at the code this is the okay this is the tle version okay so for some reason they have actually removed that okay got it cool enough so what I'm doing over here is that I have a function that is called make combinations. So make combination is nothing, but it tells me what all combinations are possible. So we'll go through that. So firstly, I'm uh, I'm taking the inputs. So my inputs are the two strings a and b, and the two numbers n and k. After that, I initialize a string that is called diffs. So what diffs does is that it only stores the unique characters that are present in the string a. So for that, firstly, I take uh, like put all the characters in uh, in the string a into a set. Then from a set, I put them back into a, into the string diffs. So now what what happens is that diffs is only having the unique characters. This is actually not required, so you can remove this. After that, I call the function that is my function make combinations. So what make combinations does is that for every index it says that i have two choices so i can either leave out the index or i can put uh, i can use the current uh, element at the current index or the character at the current index so i do that at the end if my current size or the string that i have been able to pr produce till now is already having a size k in that case this would be one of the po uh, possibilities so i'll maintain a vector called dp over here i'll put this particular string into the bp vector or in case I'm going out of bound, in that case, I'll simply return. Cool. So I think this uh, makes sense. One easy thing I've done over here is that K I have like, uh, in order to avoid multiple checks, what I've done is that I've set the value of K as minimum of K 
or whatever number of unique characters I'm having in the string A, right? After that, I'm going through all the possibilities that are now stored in the DP array or the DP vector or over here, I've renamed it to all S. Okay, so the characters that I uh, now, which I can use, I'm populating that. So the characters are actually the same characters that are present over here in S. I'm doing this uh, so that I can uh, directly use it, right? So if a thing is present in a set, then I can directly have a lookup in log in time. However, it's if it's present in the uh, string itself, then I have to linearly traverse through all of the characters. So yeah, that's what I'm doing over here. Then I'm saying that if my uh, index is valid, so if it's less than n, and either the current in uh, the two indices in the string a and b are same, or the characters at the same indices in a and b are same, or the character that is present in uh, the certain index in A is some character which I can manipulate, right? If it's that character, in, in that case, I'll increase the num increase the count. Else, if it's not that character, then what I'll do is that I'll increase the result variable by whatever number of count I previously had. So that is something I discussed uh, with you, like when we write the mathematical equation. After that, I'll set the count variable to zero. Also, after each of these iteration, in each of this iteration, I'll be setting the value of answer as maximum of <coughs> maximum of the result I'm getting over here or the global maximum I already have. At the end, I'll print the answer. So yeah, that's it for this video. This was not a tough question, maybe a slight of implementation based question. Let me know if you have any further questions on this. I'll definitely love to help you out. Cool guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye-bye.